Hello everyone, my name is Gok, and this is my group mate. In this video, we are going to present sexual harassment in Malaysia workplace. Nowadays, sexual harassment issues have taken place everywhere, especially in the workplace. However, it is very difficult to prove that whether it is happening in the workplace. Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women is the most comprehensive international agreement on the basic human rights for humans that adopted by the United Nations in 1979. Malaysia as a signatory to it and provided international standards for the protection and promotion of human rights. Since 2011, several requests for inquiries have been brought to the attention of the committee and recognized that all women should not be discriminated by any forms. In 1999, the Ministry of Human Resources has developed a code of conduct to prevent and combat sexual harassment. However, this provision of act is not enough to provide assistance and proof to victims of sexual harassment in establish a case. The terms of sexual harassment in the workplace may still novel to most of the countries, and one of them is in Malaysia. Sexual harassment is where any form of unwanted favor, not rever, or physical conduct of a sexual natural occurs, with the purpose or effect of violating the dignity of a person, in particular when creating a intimidating, hostile, degrading, humiliating, or obsessive environment. According to Chenico Associates and the River Heart vs. Lilian Tatera de Costas in 1996, this is the first case that recognized that sexual harassment in the workplace as a misconduct in Malaysia. The claimant has been molested by her manager director twice with effort that she reject continue to work and finally forced to resign. Industrial court explicitly recognized this is a constructive dismissal case and decided alleged sexual harassment leading up to her resignation proved to be on the balance of probability. However, in 1998, she lost. It is because High Court recognized that she could not provide enough evidence to prove that her claims are true. She did not report police or her partner immediately when she had faced sexual harassment. Moreover, she has been wrong that tried to bribe one of the witnesses to testify. Now, let's look on the trends of sexual harassment at workplace. According to International Labour Organization, in Hong Kong 2017, nearly 25% of interviewees suffered from sexual harassment, including 1 in 3 of them are men. In Italy 2004, 55.4% of working women in age group between 14 to 59 years old reported being victimized under sexual harassment. The first country we'll look into is Malaysia. According to Sophia Lim Sui Chen, the president of All Women Activities Awam, 3 per 10 women have faced sexual harassment at workplace. The landmark case of Jenico Association in Lillian Terrera de Costa in 1996 have proved the implication that an employer has the obligation to respect an employee's person, dignity, and system that he will not violate the same. However, in High Court for Judicial Review, the court notifies that she should lodge a report soon after the first incident, hence the evidence could be concocted. Next will be in India. In India, almost 17% of women in both formal and informal sectors face sexual harassment at workplace. Sexual Harassment and Workplace Prevention, Provision and Redressal Act 2013 have mandated the central and state government of India to develop Information Education and Communications IEC, training materials and organize awareness programs to enhance public understanding on sexual harassment at workplace. Therefore, Malaysian law should enforce from the word shell to mandate like Indian law to prevent workplace sexual harassment. Now let's head into Australia. Australian Human Rights Commission in 2012 have found that on last five years, one per four women and one per six males were sexually abused during their employment. In case of Richardson vs. Oracle Corporation Australia in 2014, Mrs. Richardson in full court claimed 
$100,000 for her psychological and reputation effect which is supposedly $18,000 plus $30,000 for her economic loss. The high liability for the employer and the weightage of the sanctions toward the accused in Australia could be an example for Malaysia. What about in China? Chinese law for workplace sexual harassment also emphasized the employers are liability for civil compensation responsibility if he failed to ensure the safety for his female employees. Article 20 for measures implementation of the special rules on the labor protection of female employees, which drafted in March 2017 by Jiang Su province, provided the employees several steps to be followed. Therefore, the lesson that Malaysia can learn from China is they have their own measures like Jiangsu province. Finally, in Philippines. In Philippines, over 163 cases of sexual harassment including at workplace been recorded from 1994 to 2015. Section 5 stated that the employers shall be solidarily liable for the damages arising from the acts of sexual harassment committed in the employment. Therefore, Malaysian employers may adopt Philippines law in providing a safe place for women to work and create gender equality at workplace. Employer Legal Responsibility for Sexual Harassment in the Workplace Based on the Occupational Safety and Health Act 1994 in Section 15, every employer are required to ensure the safety, health and welfare of the employee, especially provide a workplace with free of sexual harassment. There are few ways for employers to handle sexual harassment such as provide written anti-harassment policy, provide training for executive and employee on how to handle the harassment scenarios and look into every complaint. Based on Section 81B Sub 1, employer is obligated to respond to all the complaints of sexual harassment and has the rights to take disciplinary action against the employee that found improper behaviour in the incidence of sexual harassment. Malaysia had been introduced the Code of Practice on the Prevention and Eradication of Sexual Harassment in the Workplace. However, it is only a guideline for employers and does not have the force of law. Therefore, it raises the chances of sexual harassment incident happen in the workplace. Employees' Rights Against Sexual Harassment in the Workplace Under the Common Law of Malaysia, all the employees are entitled to work in a working environment which is free of dangerous, positive and harassment-free working environment. Based on Asma's case, Asma had proved her counterclaim for damages predicated on sexual harassment. She was not only gave evidence on describing how she had been harassed by the harassing words and when it had happened, she also relied largely on the psychiatrist's report to explain her trauma. As a result, High Court accepted the psychiatrist's findings that Asma suffered from major depression caused by the sexual harassment since she was able to provide evidence to strengthen her claim and the federal court also made a favorable judgment towards her. There are some actions that employees should know to avoid from being a victim and also use their human rights to help others such as speaking out, record out everything, report to manager or supervisor, and refers to the company's complaint procedure or policy for further action. Employee has the right to know that if employer refuses to inquire the complaint of sexual harassment, employer has to provide the reason of refusal in writing to the complainant which shown under Section 81B Sub 2. The study of harassment in the workplace in the United States shows that Around 87% to 94% victims did not file a formal complaint because they are lack of confidence that their manager will help them and might scare of reiteration from the people they sue. Actually, if employee is being terminated after reporting the improper action to their top management, it is actually an inaccurate charge which will lead the company to a claim of wrongful dismissal. However, by looking at the Malaysia Employment Act 1955, the protection laid out is not sufficient due to few imperfections. 
First, the Act is only applicable to Peninsular Malaysia but not for Sabah and Sarawak. The Act only covers the employee that fall under the two limbs in the first schedule, which the first limb are only covers the employee who earn 2000 and below. The second limb is the person who has a contract of service regardless of the wages but as long as they fall under the five categories. The five categories such as manual labor, engaged in operation or maintenance of any mechanically propelled vehicle operated for the transport, supervisor or oversee other employees, engaged in any capacity in any vessel and also domestic servant. This situation excluded freelancer or people in informal sector. For Malaysia Pentecost, it is also limited to certain forms of sexual harassment such as in Section 354 and Section 509. It deals more with physical aspects and it might a time consuming to prove. In asthma case, it was rested on the psychological harassment which this form of harassment is not defined in Employment Act and also the Malaysia Penal Code. Besides, Malaysia does not provide a specific act for sexual harassment in the workplace. Malaysia has only a small part of element under Part 15A that related to sexual harassment. Unlike other countries, there is Sexual Harassment Law 1998 for Israel, Title 7 of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 for United States of America, and the Sexual Harassment Act 1955 for Philippines. Employment Act Malaysia does not provide the protection for victims during investigation which may lead them to suffer the retaliation from other parties. It restricts the appeal outcomes for the inquiry which means that it doesn't mention any specific punishment will be given to the defendants once he or she had been proven the offence. So, the last part is recommendations. First of all, the victim shouldn't be stay silent, they should also fight for their rights. Secondly, the employment law in Malaysia. So basically, the employment act in Malaysia only covers employees who earn RM2000 and below. What about the others? So, making a new act specifically for sexual harassment for all, regardless of the salary, would be a remedy for this problem. Thirdly, the Malaysian government should come up with an anti-sexual harassment training act for the employees like the Californians do. Finally, accountability and monitoring in the workplace might reduce the sexual harassment behavior in an organization. Reviewing sexual harassment policies and procedures annually is recommendable too. In a conclusion, sexual harassment in Malaysia workplace is an a worrying situation. The organization, company, and even the government should start paying a significant attention to such cases or problems. The Malaysian law and management of company can play a greater role in preventing sexual harassment in the workplace. To wrap up, workers, especially women workers, should know how to maintain their scarcity and to get a great harmonious labor relation whereas corporate culture mutual respect. That's all from us. Hope you can enjoy our video. Thank you.